economy, number one. Illegal immigration, socialism, and Marxism does not belong in our country. Kind of mad about the assassination attempt, but luckily he survived from it and wasn't injured. Yes, thank God Trump survived that assassination attempt. Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Today, I have a guy, it's a Black guy, walking through, you know, Trump supporters. He's just walking through, um, talking to Trump supporters, various backgrounds of people, and you'll be amazed at the things that they say. But before we get back into the video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. On my way to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support now. Let's get into it. I just came to show some support for someone that I think that will lead us instead of being appointed for us. He's kind of our best option, I think. He's the best at executing. Biden and Harris, I mean, they, they don't, they can't do anything. I love Trump. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I love him. He's like my dad to me. I was thinking about my daddy and uh, I just want to pray over my daddy and stuff. Uh, Jesus name, like, let's pray for Michael and his dad. I was one. Uh, do better and get him another girl, do right, go to church and stuff, and make make our family happy and stuff. I just want my buddy right here to go viral. Is shout out to him. This shirt represents someone who took a bullet for democracy. His name is Donald J. Trump. Am I a Trump fanatic? No. I used to work for the Justice Department, and I know that if we don't show leadership, foreign countries are going to laugh at us. <laughs> What happened to God's people for 2,000 years? Then there's what we call the Dark Ages. People couldn't read their Bibles. This will be rally number 49 for me. There's 2,000 years of history since the Bible quit being written in that book. We give out the books at every rally. This is number 49. It's history that we're not teaching in our schools anymore. Unless we protect history, we're doomed to repeat it. I think Biden has been done wrong. I think that he should have been the Democratic candidate in, in 2016. Kamala, Schumer, Pelosi, they've known about his inabilities and they've kept it hidden. Mark my words, tomorrow, President Biden is going to withdraw. He did withdraw. <laughs> he actually did. And I knew, I knew it because I had been saying, I said, gosh, I know how the evil powers that be can be hard to deal with. I mean, a person can want to do something, but it's not what the politician wants. It's what the evil powers that be that run our government want. So people are puppets, except Donald Trump. He's not a puppet and they don't like him for that reason. That's why they're trying to desperately do things, okay? Uh, they've done all the things now. They've done all the things and they're going to keep trying to do what they did in Butler, Pennsylvania, what they tried to do in Butler, but it's not going to happen because prayer warriors are praying, God's protection on him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, protect Donald Trump and his family and those around him and his people that he'll be working with. We got to keep praying, 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 praying. And yes, I knew that he was not, that um, Joe Biden was not going to stay in the race. Mm -mm. People were like, he said he's going to stay. So what does that mean? Just because he said he wanted to stay doesn't mean anything. It's what you end up doing because you have to bow to the machine. And you know, most people do. They bow down to things that they should not bow down to. Make Kamala Harris the president. And it's going to be a little bit more difficult to defeat her. With Kamala, it's going to be crazy. She never was voted on. And I think that's wrong. She didn't win no primary. President Biden won the primary. Under the law, you cannot represent the citizens of North Carolina if you were not nominated. You can't be appointed a candidate. Do we have a democracy or do we have a monarchy? Today, I called the Secretary of State of North Carolina, Ms. Marshall, Josh Stein. All the people I called, none of them could tell me how they could do that legally. And that's the Board of Elections for North Carolina. I called them all this morning. The Secretary of State. I called her office. Oh, that one was really unique. I always spoke to a receptionist that gave me a false phone number. <laughs> uh, we're a little disappointed because we didn't get in. I mean, it sucks. We waited here for a couple hours. Um, I thought we got tickets we were getting in. I heard people here like at 6 a.m. We can't even get in the door. We ordered our tickets days ago. We sat in line for three hours because we didn't know this is all my son wanted to do. Yeah. They was coming to this rally. I just really wish we got in, but... I'm glad we made it this far. What do you think's next for, for Trump? I think he's got this. Just got to keep fake news from telling lies. What would you say is the biggest like lie told by fake news like now? About the border. 
yeah. and the economy. The economy, number one. Illegal immigration, socialism, and Marxism does not belong in our country. Kind of mad about the assassination attempt, but luckily he survived from it and wasn't injured. And there's a lot going on in this world that's bad. Mom, you look a little teary-eyed over there. A very important man lost his life that day, and we almost lost Donald Trump's life. You know, we lost a fireman, a dad, you know, a husband. I mean, he was a very good Christian man that served his community, that served our country. Everybody can't run out and have abortions. We're going to build that wall. We're going to protect our babies. We're going to keep kids in school, get more people off the streets. This man has a second chance in life. And God protected us all that day, not just him, but he protected us all that day. How do you feel about Kamala Harris, like, essentially being the next coming up runner for the Democrats? I've been asked that quite a bit. Like, someone wants me to bad mouth her. I'm not going to bad mouth. People are trying to, like, trying to call her a whore. I don't like her. I never really did. But she still has the same blood as us. The first thing when I turned my TV on this morning, she said that she's going to allow these girls to not be controlled by the government to have these abortions. You are crazy. It's murder. It's murder. She's evil. Like, as I was walking in here, they was like, well, it's full, you know, people were leaving. But, uh, so these three guys are like, yeah, it's full. But, um... Yeah, so people are... This man is getting a lot of good interviews, people giving their good opinions and everything like that. And I was like, you know, Kamala Harris is just for a lot of things that I'm not for. I vote my values and she is like really far left. And these people here look like good, wholesome people. They look like the kind of people that you could just trust, you know, and I just really like them. They seem just authentic. You know what I mean? And not phony, not fake. They're they're not pretentious in any way. They're just hardworking American people that want to stand up for what's right. And the lady with the blonde hair, she was like, we lost someone that day, Corey Comperatore. And I, I'm going to keep mentioning his name because it deserves to be remembered. He was a God-fearing man. He was a husband, a father, a girl dad, two daughters. And he served as a fire chief and fought for his country. So with all of that, he was a regular church goer. So he seemed to be an outstanding member of society and his soul and how he died. He died protecting his family. He died in an act of love and gave up his own life to protect the lives of his family members. Now that is going to go well with God when he stands before the Lord. So although he died, what we would call tragically, He's doing better than we are right now. We have to deal with this foolishness and people in the world acting crazy and turning on the TV and they steadily lying to you. And then they want us to be in a communist country. He's in the arms of Jesus right now. Yes, that's true. He's in the arms of Jesus. I believe it. And I didn't even know the man. <laughs> Let's get back to the video. Black American women for Trump, right? It was just about justice and actually knowing policy and um, not bad mouth either party. Yeah. There's great controversy going on. It's between Christ and Satan. We're down here as pawns in that the fight is between the law and God's government and Lucifer who wanted to defy that law. In our government right now, we have laws. And in our government right now, people are defying that law. When we lose that sanctity of our laws, then we lose our government. We lose our whole system of society. Battle isn't between politics. It's from up above. Lucifer and, and Jesus himself, entities outside of it's our earth. earth here. Why do you choose the Trump rallies to come spread, spread your message? Uh, if there was another place that was had large gatherings, we'd go to it. But at a Trump rally, you saw what happened today over here. I have no idea how many people came. And that's the way it is at every rally. I just finished going up to Grand Rapids, Benton, Pennsylvania, Doral in Florida. He flies around on an airplane, but we drive, we drive in, in this truck with his trailer over here, and that's it. So what do y'all think is like the significance of Trump getting uh, sent to the assassination like, just a few days ago? No comment on that. Divine intervention. <laughs> Who's playing the cards we don't know i got a youtube channel my name is little mike and i'm a rapper your candidate why not you can point anybody point me your candidate why not you can point anybody my name me. i was in the army i used to work for the justice department i've never had a parking ticket all right so trump rally's not over something like something happened i heard it earlier that there was a lot of people getting their cars towed because they're parking in these parking lots like right here duncan uh 
Everyone's car here got towed, came back when the rally was over, all, all of them gone. Funny fact is that everyone got permission. Even the manager was accepting tips. Apparently, apparently uh, the cops directing some people to park here too. This other guy is saying that towing company right there, it's a fake towing company. One guy just went to go get his truck right now. Not even like a building, it's a house. house. And they said only cash, no Venmo, and like every 30 minutes the price goes up. What's everybody doing right now? Like, are you working on trying to get your car? People on the police. Yeah. Okay. There's someone that's on the phone with an attorney. We asked them, we pulled in here because the police that told us Duncan was letting people park here. So we pulled in, there was no signs or anything. So I pulled in, went inside the store and asked the store manager, was like, hey, is it cool if we park here? He's like, absolutely, man. I was like, well, I feel really bad. I'm not buying anything or doing anything so let me give you some money to park here i'm not gonna get towed nope cool 100 bucks if they 100 bucks walked out everybody here's done the same thing we get back and all our cars are gone and that towing yeah, sign was not there and now it's put in the towing sign was not there everybody's been told the same thing by the store manager the only way they're releasing cards is cash even though these people had their cars stolen. They were told by the manager of the store, I believe at Dunkin' Donuts, that it was okay for them to park there. You know, even though they're not buying anything, can we park here? And then they get back. They even gave money because they felt bad for taking up spaces and not purchasing anything. Then they get back and their cars are gone. That's crazy. So we go to a Trump rally. Um, get there extremely early, like five, six o'clock in the morning. I mean, let's say it starts at 5 p.m. You need to be there 12 hours before it starts. I'm, I'm just saying, have your ticket where you can easily get to it. Don't lose it. And get there 12 hours early at least. Some people camp out. That is just how serious it is. You can't show up 30 minutes before time thinking you're going to get in. That's crazy. You can't do that. <laughs> so apparently this tone sign wasn't here like earlier. But now it's here. We would already lose this place out. They're lucky. Because we're Republicans, we're handling this civilly. News reports, police reports, you know. They're doing this right, you know. They took our tits, pocketed our money, and they were like, F them. Yeah, bro. I mean, look at this tape, man. Look at this tape. It rained this in Charlotte. Look. Would this tape be this fresh? That shows you it just got put up. They're lucky I'm not a crash out king. All right, so the police have arrived on the scene. As you can see, everybody pretty much just, like, had their cars taken away. They don't know where the cars went. So the police are going to go ahead and pretty much just like get out to the bottom of it. 340 cash to get it back. You got to pay how much? 340. Hey. And if we would have waited hey. five hey. more minutes, it would have been 380 yeah. to get it back. Okay. So who's taking the cars? Okay. Hey, it's a uh, gotcha towing company. I called Gotcha Towing, the group responsible for pulling the cars out of the lot. They told me over the phone there was a sign warning people illegally parked cars would be removed. They also said the manager of the Duncan contacted them, asking them to pull the vehicles off their property. They told me the only way people could get their cars tonight was to pay the $380 towing fee, then abruptly hung up. We talked to people working here. They said we could park here. Come back. That's foul. That is really foul. The manager of Duncan said you can park here and then call the towing company and said, get real. I don't have time for these. This, this is foolishness. And one of the young guys said, we're Republicans, so we try to have, handle this civilly. And one of the things I do want to point out, oh my gosh, is so much oh, one man that was talking about um, the, the spiritual war that's going on between God and the devil. It is so evident. It is so apparent. And I've said this before. I haven't said it in a while, but this is a battle between good and evil, you know, and God works through people. And sometimes the person doesn't even have to always be born again. God is using Donald Trump and you can tell it by the laws. He wants people to stop dying. He's not for these wars. He put the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So things are being set up in place and he wants to put prayer back in schools. He got Roe v. Wade overturned, then it went to the States. Um, he is for just trying to make a lot of things that were done wrong, right. And, you know, the media is just after this man, trying to make him seem like he is the bad person. And it's really not that he's the bad person. He wants desperately to help and he cares about America. And I just wished I had voted for him previously, but I, I plan on doing it this time because I really see that he's been given a bad deal. He's got a history of helping black people get money for their, you know, to open up businesses so that they could be successful, you know, financing Jesse Jackson's campaigns for president and back in the 80s. I mean, just so many things, so many things. But yet, I guess those mean tweets mean more than anything. And when he said something against the Central Park Five, that's the only thing that people can cling to. That's it. 
They say his race is based on that. And I'm I'm so tired of people, and it's not all people, just some people, that if a white person says something against a black person, they automatically think it's because that person must be racist. No, it's because they have an issue with this particular thing that you're doing, and it has nothing to do with your race. But clefty lefties think that way. And if you say something against a black woman or something like that, and they're like, you racist. No, he didn't call it the N word. It's not, that's not racist. It's not necessarily. No, no, it's not. So we got to stop thinking that way. But this young man did a great job of going through getting people's points, you know, and just talking to the different people. There was a black lady, black uh, American women for Trump. I love the t-shirts. They were amazing, weren't they? I'm going to try and get some merch that you can purchase from my own store, the Linda B store. And I'm hoping to have that very soon. Also, don't forget that I will be dropping a special video Wednesday, August 14th. It will drop at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard time. It is with a pastor who wrote a book called Trump the Great. And the pastor's name is Pastor Cliff McAnthony. And he's the pastor over a church in Massachusetts. It's going to be amazing. You have to check it out. Thank you so much for watching you all. Be blessed. Love God, your families, these United States of America. And as they always say, march on warriors.